All right, so I'm going to be showing you how to open up and disassemble this Samsung notebook. This is a model NP730QED, all right? NP730QED-KA1US, that's the full model. The information is on this part, it's really hard to see. Anyways, first thing we're going to do is remove the rubber feet. The customer opened this already, it looks like they didn't clip everything back. But anyways, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and pop these little rubber feet out. So as you can see, I just used my fingernail, get in there, and then pull that out. Okay, we're going to remove all four. They actually only put four screws in this thing. So let's go ahead and pop them out. All right, we're going to be using a PH0 or JS0 screwdriver. And we're going to undo all four screws. Keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern. I remove them. The customer actually... Um, took this apart already so I don't know if they mixed up anything uh, I'm assuming all four of these screws are exactly the same though so yeah all right so let's go ahead and get all of these out that one, and the last one here there we go all right now that we got all four of those out we're gonna go ahead and see if we can pop this bottom cover off usually the way I do that is I'll go with my thumb here and then I'll use my fingernails in the little gap between the bottom cover and the uh, rest of the palm rest and we'll push and let's see if it pops out sometimes I gotta like put it down like this and then pull like this okay and these clips seem to be very strong so I don't know let's try with a suction cup and wow these clips are super strong <laughs> it just broke that little handle piece off of the suction cup all right so wow how are we gonna get this open I think we're gonna have to actually use some good pry tools here so I'm gonna use this thin metal tool this is actually like um, kind of a spatula thing for scooping up pills at a pharmacy um, it needs to be super thin and very flexible but not sharp like a knife right this isn't a knife all right so let's go ahead and see we can get in the gap here and see if we can pop it up and it still doesn't want to pop out Wow these clips are crazy now I'm wondering how that customer got this thing apart. We might have to start from the back. Is that what the trick? I popped it back down after he left it unclipped. You can also see he like dented that, but it would be cheating to start from there. So let's see if we start over here. Okay, so it looks like pulling from the back, starting it kind of works. Okay, so we're gonna just work our way around. All right, it looks like using a thin, flat pry tool works best. You can use plastic pry tools if you want. Obviously, some people are scared to use metal ones, but uh, this is what I use, all right? All right, and you can see it's popping out. Okay, we're just gonna continue working our way around. And you can see, now that we've got that, what I like to do is I like to flex it inwards like that, so it kind of pulls the clips away from the outer portion. And you can see, while I do that, it's popping a lot of the clips out. Okay, so we're gonna go over here. And now we got, since we're pulling here, you gotta kind of push this down and then pull up in the center. And that should help pull the clips away. Okay, and it worked partially, but not completely. Okay, so now I'm kind of pulling this inwards and pulling up here. And you can see it's pulling those clips away. All right, and there we go. So there we go, we got the bottom cover off. Oh, it does look like it got a little bent at this clip. I don't know if it was like that from the customer, but uh, it looks like you can bend it back somewhat easily. Okay, so there we go, that's the bottom cover off. The customer said that they accidentally put this cable upside down and then it stopped turning on. Um, so we're gonna pull this out I don't know if they damaged it. It does look like it has some creases in there. Uh, let's see here. So there's not really much to the inside here. Let me put this back. Let's actually pull the battery first. So I'm gonna get underneath here. Let me zoom in. Oops, I do need to get a thumbnail, but let's go ahead and get in here. I'm going underneath as far as I can underneath the connector. And then I'm gonna hold the motherboard down and pull this up and there we go. Okay, you can also use a tool if you look at here, you can see how it's kind of like a little bit of an indent past the side walls. You can get under there and then pop it up with a plastic tool. Okay, I don't know if they changed anything else here. 
Um, after disconnecting that, what I like to do is open up the laptop and then press and hold the power button for about 15 seconds to drain any residual power. This makes the computers a lot safer to work on because then there's no power flowing through or stored up in like the capacitors. All right, so I'll do that for a bit. And then we'll zoom out a little bit again. Let me actually reconnect this cable here. Okay, so we'll get that back in and get this back in. I think he said he just replaced the fan. I don't know if he accidentally placed the fan upside down or anything, because that could also cause the computer to die. Um, but yeah, the other thing I'm worried is he probably didn't disconnect the battery before messing with all this stuff. So, and this cable, it's kind of hard to make sure it goes in straight without like turning at least a little bit. So it might have shorted out something in here. We'll see, sometimes doing the battery power reset does help fix that. Okay, I'm gonna pull this out. They put a little white dot on top so you actually know which way is right side up and right side and upside down. So yeah, if you get a replacement fan, just know that you can see if it has the little pins showing, then it's messed up. All right, so this goes here. Okay, I think I might know what happened. So he said this little clip, this clip came off. You see how it just popped out so easily? I think he must have broken something here or maybe the clip is upside down. Let's try and get this back in and then see again. So let me get this back in. And let's see, when I clip it down, you see how loose this is? It like, it's coming out way too easily. That shouldn't happen. So, I wonder if he broke something here. It's like super floppy. Usually that connector shouldn't be that loose. You can see this one, let's see. See that? It, it doesn't like just fall over super easily. Like this one is just super loose. Hmm. Okay, let me see if I can pull this connector back off or this little flap and see what's going on here. Uh, okay, I see two of these little pieces are broken, so that's partially probably an issue. I don't know if he broke the metal pins trying to fix it, because this has several pins. Sorry if my head's getting in the way. Um, let me try and put this back. One thing I can do as a workaround is to thicken up the cable, all right? So this goes back in just by like sliding it back like that. Yeah, but you can see this thing doesn't really click down anymore. Huh. Okay, and the other issue is this is the power button here. So this little cable is the power button. It has a little flip pop thing like that. All right, you got this going into the screen, probably for the camera or microphones. You got this cable going to the motherboard here. Um, doesn't exactly say what that's for, but it connects something from here to the motherboard. There's the there's a USB 3.0 port here. Oh, they bent that as well. I wonder if I can bend that back for them. Let me see if I can flatten that out for them. Use a flathead screwdriver. And I'm gonna keep my thumb here and see if I can bend that for them. Actually, okay, I'm going to have to just pull it like that. That did kind of bend back out a bit, so there we go. All right, headphone jack and micro SD card slot there. All right, yeah, this weather, it's too hot right now. My guess is this is way too loose, so hopefully once I can fix that, I can get it working. All right, again, you saw the fan. CPU is soldered to the motherboard here. You got the LCD LVDS connector here. This is for the screen. Uh, you got the two wireless antennas there. All right, uh, wireless card is soldered to the logic board or motherboard. You got another antenna here. Uh, speaker connection connects here. This kind of cable is another one, like you pop it up like that. Same thing with the other speaker there. And then obviously the battery. You got the keyboard backlight, keyboard cable, and then the touchpad or trackpad cable. So let's go ahead and see if I can somehow get this working. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually thicken this cable by putting tape on it. So 
what I do, there's a few ways you can do this. If you can cut accurately with scissors, you can do that. Um, if you can't cut accurately with scissors, you might need like a razor blade or something. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'll take a piece of tape here. Okay. And okay. what we're going to do is we're going to just tape over this whole piece here. Okay, and you want to try and get the edge to line up. I don't know if I can show this on camera. Let's see. I'll move this out of the way. Let's see what I can do. I think I have another customer here, though. So, All right, so we'll line this up, the edge, edge to edge. Try and get it as close as you can as possible. All right, and then just stick that down. Right, if you can, you, you can see how, oops, sorry. If you can see, you can see how we can still lift this tab up. You might want to leave that so you have a little handle to move it around. Okay, and then try and get any bubbles out of it if there are bubbles. Try and push them out. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we have to cut off the excess. So it has these little wings. <clears throat> so we're going to actually um, just cut the side edges next to it. Right. So I have this little razor blade here, and we're just going to cut next to that. So just get in there like this, and cut that. Okay, just like this, and like that. All right, you want to be careful not to cut into the cable. And then, now that you cut those edges, we should be able to peel this up, hold this down. You can kind of hold at that edge, and then we should be able to peel the rest away like that. Okay? And if there's excess, it's probably okay, but if you want, you can cut that out as well. But you gotta be very careful, right? So we'll peel this up and away. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna try and cut the little excess off here. But be careful not to cut the cable. Like that, okay. And hopefully now we can just peel this out. I don't want to peel it all the way off of that so you can see I, I was like peeling that away so what we'll do is we'll move that over and then we'll cut the excess over here and hopefully we can peel that without removing it from there okay perfect there we go all right next we're gonna get this cable in so let's go ahead and reattach this cable let's zoom out and hopefully that was enough. Oh, they're outside. So, second. Let's go ahead and try and get this one in first. So slide that in. It's extra thick, so it's gonna be harder to do. That's why you kinda need this little tab to help pull the cable in all the way. Okay, and then we'll notch that back down and hopefully it's good now. Same thing with this side, just get it lined up. Okay, and then get that in. All right, hold that tab in place and latch that down. We're gonna go ahead now and get the battery cable back in. Let me zoom out here. Again, I do have a customer outside, so I might have to pause and come back, but give me a second. All right, so this will kind of be a thumbnail. Let's go ahead and get this. You just line it up and push it down. All right, I forgot to mention there's an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. One screw, once you do that, you can lift it slightly and pull it out. Pretty simple, all right? Let's go ahead and see if it powers up. I saw the keyboard flash for a second. I think it's good. So I did see the keyboard light up. It's probably gonna take a little time to start up because we did disconnect the battery. It acts as the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery, and there we go. It's powering up, so we should be good to go. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, uh, well, I already said that. But uh, yeah, if you can't contribute to the channel, it'd help a lot. If you could watch a few of my other videos, like and comment on those as well, because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Other than that, we just got to put the thing back together. So give me a second because my customer's out there and then we'll put the bottom cover back on and yeah, I'll see you guys in a bit, but you can see it's starting up. All right.
and touch screen's working. Okay. Yeah, give me a second. We'll put the bottom cover back after I go talk with my customer. All right, let's get the bottom cover back on. Clean a little bit of dust out. All right, so to get the bottom cover on, basically line it up and just push it all down. Make sure to click everything into place. Okay, just like this. All right. Make sure everything is nice and tight in there. Okay, click that. This laptop creaks a lot, but anyways, let's go ahead and get the screws back in and the little rubber feet and we're pretty much good to go. So let's go ahead and do that. Simple, straightforward. And then we'll have to obviously restart, shut down, and then power it back up again just to make sure. All right, rubber feet just go in by lining it up and pushing it down. All right. They seem to all be the same size. Actually, are they the same? Okay. All right. So that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and restart the computer one time. It's always a good idea to do that after doing any hardware changes. We'll do a restart. It's restarting now, if you can see. It's taking a while. There we go. All right, and it's starting back up. All right, and that's pretty much it. Again, I'm gonna shut it down one time just to make sure, or I can even just tap while well, it was saying about the fingerprint, so it's probably okay, but I'm gonna try pushing the power button just to make sure. We'll try and put it in sleep mode just by tapping it once and see, or pressing it once. And then, depending on his settings, if it's not set up that way, it might not go into sleep mode, but that's how we'll test it. Okay, there we go. We push the button. And you can see nothing's happening. So we're going to go ahead and shut it down. Wait till it's completely off. And then we'll have to push the power button again to make sure it turns on. So right now you can see there's no lights on the keyboard. Nothing. Let's see. And I see the keyboard lighting up. And we're good to go. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Let's drop this bike.